Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, sir. We can hear you, sir. I think I lost. Yes, sir, we can hear you now. Yes, you okay, lost. Sorry. Okay. So um, I was saying that you have the income return, and I've explained that. I'm sure you got up to that point, and that you have the capital return, which can also be referred to as a capital gain or capital appreciation. And we have the total return. And I started you know, explaining these returns by telling you that there is no gain without pain. So there are actually gains for sacrifices you've made in terms of you know, forfeiting to expend a capital in order to enjoy a series of income in future or a, a lump sum in future. Mm -hmm. That's it. So you can make this sacrifice for you to enjoy a cash flow or a stream of income, or you can mm -hmm. be looking at the capital gains coming from your investments. So, and we have explained what, how the income return, what it looks like, that there must be a profit that you have to determine, which will serve as an input in determining the income return. Then in the case of capital return, we told you, I'm, I'm telling you rather that we, uh, the consign of the- uh, an opportunity to rely on next week, you know, to remind us. Or financial management expert or fund manager is to look at or to see whether- the other, other one, okay, but the first one, yeah. The, the first who is one, that? Yeah. Who is that, please? Please, please unmute, unmute your system. Opportunity for you live Mumbai. Direct breeze, you can't do it. Who is that? Please unmute. All right, sir.
Can I continue? Can you hear me? Please, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. So, in the case of capital return, the emphasis is on the real return or the real rate of return. And what does that mean? That we are not looking at a situation where the capital is just appreciating in nominal terms, but at a situation where the capital invested in an asset or whatever investment it is, is appreciating in real terms. And what does it mean to appreciate in real terms? It means that whatever you have expended today on your investment, which is starting as the initial capital outlay, do you understand? You must be able to get it back at the maturity date of the investment. You must be able to get it back in real terms, as well as also get back a return on capital. Another way to look at it is that the future value of capital expended today plus additional reward. What we mean is that when you say your capital appreciates in real terms, it means that you will get the future value of capital expended today plus additional rewards. When you only get the future value of the capital expended today, you only broke even. In, that, in other words, you neither made profit or gain. But when you have an additional reward, that is the capital gain. That is the appreciation in real terms. But when you only break even, it means that the capital has only appreciated what? In nominal terms. But when you have an additional reward, it means you have broken, sorry, that you have made returns in real terms. And it is that additional reward that is actually your return. Why do we say that? If 10 million today can buy you um, a block, uh, uh, sorry, a block of six number, a block of three, a block of six number three bedroom flats. Yes, let's say it like that. With 10 million, and you now have to invest that 10 million maybe in stocks. And at the end of five years, the, the, the value of the stock, the value of this stock, we are not talking about the return from the stock, but the value of the stock, do you understand, has appreciated to 15 million and you realize that that 15 million can no longer buy you the same block of six numbers, three bedroom flat in that five years time. It means that your capital appreciated just in nominal terms, but not in real terms. In real terms, you must break even. So you must get that value in future, which will be able to replace or which will be able to purchase what the capital you expended today can purchase. Am I communicating? I hope you got it. Hello? Are you there? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you, boss. Yes, sir. I hope you understood what I just said now. Yes. I should repeat it. No, no, no. It's okay. Because some of these things are necessary. Uh, As I'm going to say, if you could um, re uh, re recap on the, the last few uh, statements, me, I think that was very, very key. Because when I enter calculations, uh, some of these things you need to understand them. What I'm saying is that capital return, when we say that you are enjoying returns in real time, we are saying that you actually broke even and made additional, uh, uh, sorry, enjoy additional returns, rewards from investment. What that means is that assuming you have 10 million today and that 10 million can purchase a block of six numbers, three bedroom flat, but you decided to invest it in a stock. Am I communicating? 
in five years time, maybe the stock will mature. That's the maturity period of the stock. And um, you realize that in five years time, the value of the stock is now 15 million. We are now asking, did you actually make returns in real terms or in nominal terms? If the 15 million cannot purchase what 10 million can purchase today, you did not break even. Your capital only appreciated in nominal terms and not in real terms. In real terms, the 15 million should be able to purchase, am I communicating, back that property and still give you an additional allowance. Do you understand? It is when it, purchase, it has the capacity to purchase that item it can purchase today and still give you additional income. That is when you will say that the capital appreciated in real terms. But if you can only purchase in future what that capital can purchase today, you only broke even. In other words, you neither made gain nor loss. Because we are saying that because of the time value of money, 15 million in, in five years' time and 10 million today are the same. So you neither made profit nor loss. But if you can purchase the same property again or the same asset again and still have additional allowance to yourself, it means that the capital appreciated in real terms. The value of the stock appreciated in real terms. That's what I'm saying. I hope it's clear now. Hello? In the case of total returns, we are looking at the summation of the income return and, and the capital returns. And the summation of the two can be referred to as the money-weighted rate of return, or you can also refer to it as the holding period return. So whenever you hear me talking about holding period return as a lecture continues or money weighted rate of return. And I'm simply referring to the, to the total returns. And you need to be familiar with these. These are some of the various components. Of, you, are, you, are, you are going off at some point. We can hear you. Returns from an investment. Okay. So we have talked about the three types of returns from an investment. And we have also explained what investment is all about. That it is the parting away with a sum of money today in order to enjoy a stream of income or cash flow or to enjoy a capital gain. So that is the definition of investment or asset or stocks. So you need to understand as well that you need to understand that as well that there are myriads of investment. These investments, there are so many, there are variant types. Okay, you can talk about deposits, you can talk about debenture, you can talk about shares, you can talk about real estate investments. You can talk about um, insurance policies. You can talk about mortgages. You can or mortgages, of course, or annuities. You can talk about options. You can talk about future. So these variant types of investment can be broadly categorized under two headings, which are the financial assets or investment or the real assets or investment. So these are the variant types. So if you understand that we have variant types, you should also understand that among the types or among the types, you have what you call subtypes. What we are saying is that for each type, among the type, you have its subtypes. Take for instance, a real estate investment as a type of investment has subtypes. The subtypes would be recreational. It could be residential property investment. It could be commercial property investment. 
It could be industrial, administrative, they're all investments. So these are the subtypes and the subtypes can be perceived as the kinds, the kinds of investment. So even when you look at residential, for instance, you can still break it down again. You may be talking about the measurement. You may be talking about the race. You may be talking about um, uh, semi-detached block of flats. Of course, uh, uh, ter uh, uh, what's it called? Tenement, that's face me, I face you. Bungalow, duplexes, and post of others. So when we also consider shares, for instance, which is a financial asset, not a real asset this time around, you may be talking about the cumulative preference shares. You may be talking about the preference shares. You may be talking about the ordinary or common shares. Of course, you should know the differences between all these, that when you are talking about the common ordinary shares, of course, the holders are risk taker in the business. In the case of preference shares, they have to be settled, do you understand, before the ordinary shareholders can be compensated. Or in the case of cumulative preference share, these are what you did in economics those days, uh, where they we are not able to be said. Of course, you have preference shareholders, you have cumulative, you have ordinary shareholders. Whatever they are owed can be carried over to another financial day. So these preference shareholders, they must compulsorily be compensated. But the ordinary shareholder or common shareholder is a risk taker to the business. In actual sense, he's an owner of his business, though he may not be the one handling the stewardship or managing the business directly. Am I communicating? He might have um, he might have invested in indirect stock. That means there is an institution or an organization that manages their investment for them. Whether it is managed by someone or not does not um, uh, sorry negate the fact that. He is a risk taker and an owner in his business. So these are some of the things you have to know, but you should be able to distinguish between the types of investment, the subtypes, just like I mentioned, which I refer to the subtypes as also the kinds. And you should also be able to tell us what the nature of an investment connotes. The nature of an investment simply tells us it is an explicit, uh, 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 sorry, how do I put it now? It is an explanation of the kinds of investment. The nature of an investment tells you about the arrangement, okay? When you are trying to explain what a mesonet is, the composition of a mesonet, you are talking about the nature of that investment. So it is an, an explanation of what the kind of an investment is. So the kind can be referring to the brand. It can be referring to the product. It can be referring to the trademark. It can be referring to the variety, the different varieties of a type. So what is a type or what is a kind is actually contextual. Contextual in the sense that what may be a type can also be a kind if it has a subtype. What am I saying? I gave an example that when you look at um, investment, you have the broad category of financial assets and real assets. There are types. When you want to look at the types, of real assets, for instance, you may start talking about residential, commercial, industrial, recreational. So you can see that these are the kinds of real assets, but those kinds can be perceived as subtypes. And if we move further, we see another kind of those subtypes. Because if we look at re uh, residential, for instance, you may have the masonry. You may have the bungalow, you may have the duplex. So, and that's why I say that what is a type or kind is contextual, depending on how 
you are looking at it or at the level which you are looking at it. You need to understand this. So having understood this, my first assignment is usually for you to go and look at at least 20 types of investments, or uh, let's say 10 types of investment. Also tell us their kinds. Tell us their kinds. And as well, tell us the nature. The nature is an explanation of the, of the composition of the kinds of investment. So you need to tell us what they look like, the composition, that's the nature. Having done that, we have known what investments are all about, and we know that they have time. They have kind. And you can also consider the nature. So at this point, I would like you to know that every investor has an objective have an objective or a goal. And the goal of investor A may not be the same with the goal of investor B. The goal of investor B may not be the same with the goal of investor C. So now, if they have different goals, How do you now satisfy the different goals? Who is there? How do you now satisfy the different goals of these investors? That takes us, the, uh, takes us to the point that we have to consider the characteristics of an investment. Different investments have different characteristics. So an investor would now have to look for those investments that have the attributes or the characteristics to satisfy his goals, to satisfy their goals. Different investors, they have to look for the investments that have the characteristics to satisfy their goal. There are different characteristics of an investment and different investments may not have the same features or attributes or characteristics. So, but there are some ideal characteristics of an investment, which we may consider today. One of them is the security of capital. In other words, most investors are looking for investments that will always appreciate that the capital will always appreciate, not just in nominal terms, but also in real terms. That means the capital, the money invested, the initial capital is secure. It's secure. So they have to look for investment that have that characteristics. Some say real estate appreciates in, in real terms that you can never make loss that you will always recover what you have expended. We are not certain whether it appreciates in nominal terms or in real terms, but what we know is that real estate appreciates. Okay? So we are not talking about an investment that will replace back what you have expended, just like in the case of sinking fund model. We are talking talking about investment that will capture the time value of money and the inflation effect on the returns. So security of capital is an ideal investment attribute. Another ideal investment attribute we can talk about is consistency of income. Yes, consistency of income. An investment that gives you regular income or an asset that gives you regular income. Mind you, if you have an investment that gives you income today, tomorrow you are not sure of. The risk is so high. The risk is so high because risk is actually the variability of return. 
that today you will have return. Tomorrow you are not even sure of return. So a rational investor is looking for an investment that has con a consistent uh, income returns. Another characteristics we may look at is the aspect of concealability. Well, you see, when we look at some of these characteristics, it depends on what the investor is looking for. And that's why I'm telling you, we have different investors with different goals. They have to select those investments that have the attributes to satisfy their investment goal. There are some investments that are very concealable. There are those that are not concealable. So concealability is also an attribute of an investment. Real estate investment is, for instance, not concealable. That means if you have a land, people will always know where the land is. It cannot be hidden. Unlike in the case of um, shares or what you call it, stocks. You may have them, um, you may be a shareholder of a company. All you just have is your certificate. You can go and hide somewhere. Nobody knows where it is. But if you have a real estate investment, it is not concealable. It can easily be seen. So if the goal of the investor is to have an investment that is not concealable, he does not need to go to real estate investment. So the issue here is that the investor must look for those investments that have the attributes to satisfy his investment goal. And in most cases, these investors are not professional in that area. For them to be able to you know, tell you the characteristics of investments and the ability of the investment to satisfy their investment goal, there may be need for them to look for investment advisor. These investment advisors we are referring to, they may not be working for an, uh, sorry, for an organization, just like in the case of institutional investor. They may only be just advisors that you have to contact. They can also be stockbrokers. Stockbrokers can also serve as investment advisors. So they give you advice. They can sell you on those investments that have the attributes to satisfy your goal. So the investor profiles his goals. These are what these are the these are my objective. This is the goal. Then the investment advisor will tell you for us to achieve this goal, go for social so and so investments. Because those investments are the ones that have the attributes to satisfy the goal. I don't know whether that is clear. So if you have gotten up to that point, then there are other attributes. I might not mention all. Please go and read up. Like tax shelter is an attribute, an ideal attribute of an investment. It is not every investment that enjoys tax shelter, like the pension fund. Do you understand? And some insurance policies that enjoy tax shelter. Real estate does not enjoy tax shelter. So it depends on the goal or what the investor is looking for. He had to look for those ones that have the attributes to achieve the goal. Why I'm teaching like this? Because I'm not going to start giving you a topic heading by heading because we don't have much time. I will just glance through the whole thing. Please, you go and read up. Time is not on our own part, but at least the key thing or the rudimentary, uh, sorry, aspects of this portfolio and what you may be expecting in your exam, I will touch on them. So now, having said this, the, I started by telling you that there is no portfolio analysis without investment analysis. And that is why I started first of all by explaining what investment is all about. And you can see, if you know, I'm sure all of you have seen what the rainbow, rainbow looks like. Rainbow has seven colors, different colors, but it is one rainbow. The rainbow is not two. The rainbow is not three. The rainbow is not four. Neither is it five or six or seven. It is one rainbow. The same way we have different investments that can make up a portfolio. So 
a portfolio is a set of investments. It's made up of different investments, but it is perceived as one. The ownership is single. So there is single ownership when you are talking of a portfolio. That's the concept behind a portfolio. In the olden days, they used to look at a portfolio and that briefcase, you know, workers used to carry and they packed documents inside. ID. So the documents inside the briefcase was what we used to perceive as portfolio. Don't they? But today, we look at it. Oh, bye, as, Hello? In. So today, we look at it as a set of investments owned by a person, possibly managed by an entity. So when you have, have investments in, uh, let's say, uh, shares, bonds, real estate investment that is direct you have debenture which is of course a kind of bond you have insurance policies you have annuities you have future they can serve as your portfolio you can also have a portfolio in a situation you have invested with um, institutional investors or investment companies that engage in different kinds of investments. So a situation, an investment company will pull funds from members of the public and reinvest it in different assets. The investment company is not actually the owner of the investment. They are the fund manager, while the people they pull the fund from are actually the owners or the risk takers of the business. So when they pull funds from members of the public and reinvest it in varying assets, for the fact that the underlying investments are many, a portfolio has been created. You are an owner of a portfolio indirectly because you are not the one managing the variant assets. Am I communicating? I hope it's clear. Hello? We can, can you hear, hear me? You, sir. Yes, we can hear you, sir. So you yeah, yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you, sir. You have a portfolio, but you are not, the portfolio is not in your custody. It is in the custody of the fund. The fund I'm referring to is the investment company. Some of these investment companies you can see today, for example, Conoye, those ones that are registered with Nigerian Stock Exchange, they are all PLCs, they are all quoted, public limited liability companies. They are perceived as the blue chip companies like Corn Oil, Okomu Oil. You have a total. You have union home rates. You have UPDC rates. You have Sky Shelter Fund. Sky Shelter Fund is rich too. You have, uh, what do you call it? You have um, Abiko. You have Asamansad Insurance. And myriad of them. The second assignment I used to give is for you to go and look at at least 10 companies, investment companies that are registered with SEC. Sorry, that are regulated by SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and are registered with the Nigerian stock exchange market. You can as well. Okay, let's leave it like that. The third assignment, all my assignments must be collected and submitted because 
why I'm lumping them like this is because there is no time. The third assignment I used to do it give is for you to look at the stock exchange market across countries. In Nigeria, we have the Nigeria stock exchange market. I just only need you to itemize the stock exchange market in like, uh, okay, uh, 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 let me put it like this. Five, in Africa, five, in Europe, five, in Asia. I think we work with that. And possibly maybe say United States of America. So I want you to itemize like 10, uh, 15 stock exchange markets across the globe. Okay? Some countries have more than one. Like South Africa, you have more than one stock exchange market in South Africa. So you need to be familiar with some of these things. I know why I'm saying that because when we will start the real analysis and calculations, I will be laying emphasis to some of the things that they do. So please look at them. So I now told you that the same way you have seven colors in a rainbow, but one rainbow, that is the same way you have different investments that make up a portfolio, but one portfolio because a portfolio is owned by a person. So all your investments looked considered as a whole is your portfolio. And when we are doing portfolio analysis, we don't look at the individual investment alone. We do portfolio analysis, it is in two levels. The first level is to consider each of the investments that make up the portfolio and do analysis of each of the investments that make up the portfolio. After we finish doing analysis of each of the investments that make up the portfolio, we will now take it to another level. The results we got from each of the investments that make up the portfolio level, that make up the portfolio, we lump them together to now do the portfolio analysis. So it is at two levels, the security level or the asset level, then before you can move to the portfolio level. In other words, you cannot do portfolio analysis without first doing the individual investment that makes up of the portfolio, without doing analysis of each of the individual investment that makes up the portfolio. That's what we are saying. It's very key. I'm still thinking of how we are going to run some of these analysis, especially now we are working online, but I will, I will sort that out. The only challenge you may have is that the speed with which I will treat it now may not be the speed I've been using for the previous uh, sets that I've got. So you need to sharpen your mind and also think faster and know that there will not be repetition or uh, what do you call it, uh, constant um, revision. The revisions will now be left for you to handle by yourselves. So, having said this, um, There is this adage that says that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. That is the essence of having a portfolio. The essence of having a portfolio, you know, when you put all your eggs in one basket and the basket drops, what happens? All the eggs will crash. The risk of putting all your eggs in one basket is very high. That is how this idea of portfolio came up. Diversify your sources of income by having different investments. 
so that when one investment is not doing well, the other one is compensating for the losses coming from those ones that are not performing. So it is all about performance. So we are saying that different investments, if you didn't get any other thing today, get this, that different investments behave differently given a particular state of the economy. The economic condition or situation does not treat the different investments the same way. The economic condition of a country can affect different investments in different ways. And a particular, they say one man's food is another man's poison. A particular situation in the economy can be favorable to an investment, but it may not be favorable to another investment. That is why we are saying you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket. When you have different investments that behave differently to the same economic condition, you have a balanced portfolio. Balanced portfolio. But when you have a group of investments in your portfolio that behave alike to this same economic condition, you have what we call a lopsided portfolio. Lopsided portfolio. Lopsided portfolio. And there is no investment analyst that will advise his client to go for a lopsided portfolio. So we need to understand the characteristics of investments and how they react to the economic situation. Investment analysts or experts who can also be referred to as federal watchers, they study economic situation. They study the trend in the economy. Based on past trend, they will be able to make projections into the future. They will be able to make predictions. They will be able to advise their clients on what investment, which investment to accept and the ones to throw away. There are investments that they will advise you to retain. There are investments that they will advise you to throw away. Am I communicating? And you also have investments that they can advise you not to throw away. So I mentioned two things. The ones they can advise you to retain and the ones they can advise you to throw away. So the headache is on the investment analyst who can also be a fund manager in where you have, uh, sorry, an organization or a fund that manages a pool of funds for you know, equity holders. So he can be a fund manager. So now this fund manager, who can also be referred to as a portfolio manager, or he may have portfolio managers on dying. We need to look at what role will the portfolio manager be doing? It is the duty of the portfolio manager to advise, depending on the kinds of investments he's handling in the fund, to advise the fund manager on the decisions they can take to ensure that the goal or the objective of the equity holder, that is the people they put their fund together, that their goals are satisfied. So fund managers make strategic decisions. Portfolio managers to make strategic decisions. But if you have other, if you, in the hierarchy, uh, uh, in the, uh, what do you call it, organizational chart, if you have people that now manage a particular type of asset, they make tactical decisions. So strategic decisions are made by top management staff, the top notch in an organization. And the top, top notch in an organization, they make strategic decisions, and these decisions are usually long-term decisions. Why tactical decisions are made by the lower cadre staff? And these tactical decisions are referred to as short-term, you know, uh, they have short-term implications. 
when you are trying to decide, uh, you have a portfolio of real estate. You are trying to decide whether to bring in residential into the portfolio or to bring in com commercial or to bring in industrial or to bring in recreational. These are decisions made at the tactical level. But when you are looking at the top management, the top management, where you have the top notch, the people that you know runs the company, the managers in the company, they make strategic decisions which have long term implications. They may be looking at how the company, the investment company, can match with another company. That is a strategic decision. Strategic decision borders on issues of merger, absorption. Uh, flotation, taxation, commercialization, privatization, and host of lives. So you need to be familiar with what strategic decision in an investment company and tactical decision in an investment company connotes. So now, these are decisions that have to be made. Along this decision, the portfolio manager faces a lot of problems. The fund manager faces a lot of problems. What are these portfolio problems? The portfolio problems are problems of problems of selection, yes? The first problem is a problem of selection. The second problem is the problem of timing. And the third problem is the problem of allocation. Please, for those of you that have not gotten my book, go and pick this book because most of these things I'm saying are here. Very, very essential. There is little I can say considering the time that is available. Please, this book is compulsory. I am not telling you, begging you to come and buy. It's compulsory. So at the selection, at, at, at the, we mentioned three problems, problems of selection, problems of timing, problems of allocation. In the case of problems of selection, the headache of the portfolio manager is he already knows that there are myriads of investments. There are a plethora of investments. And these investments have different characteristics, just like I told you. And the portfolio manager is also considering the goal of the investors that they are managing their fund. It is, it is his headache to find out those investments that have the attributes to satisfy the goal of the investors who are not actually in direct custody with the investment. Am I complicating? So how will he now select from thousands of investments that exist is a big problem to him. So for him to select that, he must understand the peculiarities of this investment. He must understand the goal of his clients. And he should have the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, financial skill to be able to select those investments that meet the requirements of the client. So he faces the problem of selection. Which one should I select that will take care of what my client is looking for? Because every member of the public, they put fund for who they are supposed to give feedback by virtue of either paying them dividend if they for if, if they have invested in shares or paying them coupon if they have invested in bond it is their duty do you understand to they owe them a duty of care to give them that feedback on what they have used their funds full of funds to do so that is a big payday to the portfolio manager and the fund manager another issue is the problem of timing Every investment does not perform for life. 
even human beings. There are times you are performing. There are times you are not performing. So every investment, they do not perform for life. There is a particular situation in the economy that will come in, you find out that some are no longer doing well. Doing well in terms of their returns and in terms of their risk. Risk. So you find out that some investments are no longer doing well. So it is the duty of the portfolio manager to know when to invest on that problem of timing, when to invest, when not to invest, and when to sell, when to discard of investment. I mentioned three things here. Please take note, when to invest, when not to invest, and when to divest, when to sell some of your investment. He should understand this. When do you invest? When are you supposed not to invest? And when you do you sell off some of your investment? You sell some of your investment when you notice that the value is about to drop. You need to understand the business cycle as an investment expert or analyst. When you see that the value is about to drop or that the returns, that's the income return is about to drop. That is the best time to discount. When you see that the value of your investment is about to rise, that is when to purchase. You study the business cycle. Fortunately, I can't be presenting business cycle to you here. Assuming it's a physical lecture, I will break this thing down, but some of them are well explained in the textbooks. So you need to understand when to invest, when not to invest, and when to sell. If the economy is volatile, it may not be good to either invest or not to invest. You don't see it and you watch the economy. And that is why investment analysts are look considered or are referred to as federal watchers or economic watchers. You just watch the economy. So please, you need to be familiar with that. And the third problem, which the portfolio manager and the fund manager faces is the problem of allocation. When we talk about problem of allocation, we're actually referring to, this is the most important aspect of the, the most serious challenging problem the portfolio manager faces. The problem of allocation. We are talking about how to allocate funds. How to allocate funds. Now you have seen like 20 or 30 investments that have the attributes to satisfy the investor's goal. But for you to stake your fund in these 20 investments, you may need like 200 million or 500 million, but you only have 40 million with you. That is the problem of allocation. How do you now apportion these 40 million to this myriad of investments? And that is why you cannot look at the problem of allocation in isolation without looking at some statistical tools that you can use to come out from the headache of problem of allocation. And that is where correlational analysis becomes indispensable. So in this course, you must at least understand what correlation does. So in the problem of allocation, we are saying that we have limited resources, but there are myriads, plethora of investment. How do we now capture them? The only thing the investor can think of is, oh, there are myriads of investment. But it is not all of them that are relevant, considering the goal of their client. They only have to select those ones that have the attributes to satisfy the goal of the client. They may also have to do what Marco is in 1956 called the mathematical programming, which is a variant of linear programming. 
in order to help them to select the ideal investments that will make up the portfolio. So we will look at this mathematical a calculation. We will look at this mathematical programming at the appropriate time because I will be able to explain it through this video. I may have to find a way, otherwise you read it up in the test. If we can see physically, I don't know whether there will be room for that. I will find a way to, you know, explain it. Or if I can see videos on that, I will forward to you. So these are the three basic problems that we face when we are talking about portfolio problems. That is the headache of the portfolio manager and the fund manager. So, um, I would like us, before I close this lecture, to, uh, I know that we have different backgrounds, but let's consider look at what we call diversification strategies. Diversification strategies. What are these diversification strategies is that investors or investment advisors can advise their investors to spread their tentacle. You cannot when you mention diversification strategies, you're actually talking about those strategies that you have to adopt for you to have a balanced portfolio or a portfolio that is made up of assets or investment of variant types. We can be, for instance, Diversification strategies for real estate. And there are classifications on how real estate investment could be perceived or considered. You can diversify real estate by geographic location or economic type. By geographic location, we are saying that you can have your real estate investment in uh, you can look at it from the national level or global level you can have your real estate investment or you can also look at it at the metro level so let's start from the metro level maybe for instance in lagos you have different local government so you can have your real estate in the various uh, local governments you feel that are okay with you you have diversified they are not in the same location they are not in the same location so you have diversified so, and what you have done is that when you diversify, you are trying to reduce the risk of loss in your investment. Because there is that probability that, uh, there is high probability that if all your investments are in one place, there is that probability, high probability that it may be gutted by fire and you lose all. But when they are scattered in different regions or areas, there is no way you can lose all at the same time. So when you diversify, you are trying to do what? To minimize risk. So diversification by geographic location means scattering your properties in different places. It can be at the metro level, meaning at the local government level of a state. It can be at the national level. You can have your property in Sokoto. If you feel Sokoto will not be affected by Boko Haram. You can have it in um, uh, Lagos. You can have it in Kogi. You can have it uh, 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 in Enugu. You can have it in Cross River. You can have it in Delta and so on. That is diversification by, proper, by geographic location or by economic type. There's also what you call diversification by property type. You can diversify your property, your real estate investment by property type to minimize risk as well. How do you do that? You can have a bungalow, sorry, you can have residential, you can have commercial, 
you can have industrial, you can have religious, you can have recreational, you can have administrative. Even within residential, just as we earlier mentioned, you can have masonry, you can have terrace. Face me, I face you, that's tenement. You can have bungalow, you can have semi detached. You can have blocks of flats and host of others. So that is diversification by property type. And the essence of having all these variants is that you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. So that when one investment is not doing well, the other one is compensating for it. No two properties are the same by virtue of location, location, and their markets are totally different. So their performances are also different. So when you spread your tentacles by investing in different kinds of real estate investment, you are also diversifying and minimizing risk. That's portfolio. You are creating a portfolio. Then the third one is diversification by ownership structure. The diversification by ownership structure means that you can have your investment in real estate as a sole owner, what you can refer to as a sole proprietorship business or investment. You can have what you call JV, what that's joint venture. You can have what you call a partnership arrangement. These are different ways you can diversify your investment by ownership structure. You can also diversify your investment by life cycle, cost by life cycle, not costing, please, life cycle. In that case, uh, the investor can decide to purchase a property. I'm just using property as an example now that is either is purchasing a balance. When he gets a balance, he mixes it up with another property that is at the foundational level. He can decide to mix it up with another property that is at the lintel level. He can decide to mix it up with another property that they have already roofed. He can decide to also add to it in the process of his, in the, uh, sorry, in the course of his diversification. He can decide to add to it a property that has been rendered no longer in carcass form. It has been rendered and painted. You can also decide to invest also in a furnished apartment. So all these levels tells you that the, all these properties we are mentioning at different levels are not in the same market. And they are not affected by the same level of risk. That means that there is diversification by life cycle. Getting different properties at different levels with different risks because the essence of diversification is to get investments that have different levels of risk so that when one is affected, the ones that are not affected are compensated for the loss of the one that is affected. And that is what the correlational analysis is all about. And that is why we must have to apply the correlation to statistical to to show you how this actually works practically. When we get to the bridge, we will cross the bridge. So having said this, hello, hello, am I communicating? Can you hear me? Can you still hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. We can hear okay. you, sir. OK, so then you can have Diversification. You can have diversification by financial arrangement. Yes, financial arrangement. In this particular case, you may have a situation that this financial arrangement is usually common with an institutional investor. Yes, it's usually common with institutional investors, and what they do is that they get a pool of funds from members of the public and they invest it. By the time they generate revenue, they make their returns, they keep some of them as their reserve earnings while 
uh, part of it is declared as dividend to the shareholder. If it is bond, part of it is declared as coupons to the share uh, to the bondholders. Am I communicating? So, but the institutional investors carries an additional responsibility of going out there to look for debts or loans to make up the fund that they have acquired from these bondholders or shareholders. So, when we are talking about diversification by financial arrangement, it is either that they use only the equity fund or they can capture both equity fund and what? The loanable fund. So it is diversification by financial arrangement. There is a debt finance. There is also an equity contribution from the shareholders who pulled fund for them to manage on their behalf. So that's diversification by financial structure. So you can have also, finally, you can have diversification by uh, managerial arrangement, yes. Managerial arrangement. Shareholders or the bondholders can diversify their investment. Remember that the real portfolio owners are the shareholders and the bondholders bond in the case of indirect investment. They are the real portfolio holders, even though they are, they, are, they are the real portfolio owners, but they are not the custodian. The custodian is the institutional investor that manages it for them. Just like as I was mentioning some of the institutional investors, like a, um, um, union homes, so, Sorry, uh, Union uh, REITs, UPDC REITs, uh, Texaco, Corn Oil PLC, okay, uh, Okomu Oil, and most of them, most of them, these are the institutional investors that they are the custodian of the investment, but they are not the owner. They could also be the fund manager, and they may have portfolio managers working for them. The real owners are the shareholders or the bondholders, okay? So they are holding it, but the owners, are the people they put fund for. So now, when you are talking about diversification by managerial arrangement, we are saying that these shareholders or bondholders, instead of investing with a company that have myriads of assets, when a company has myriads of assets based that, that is funded by the pool of fund they got from, uh, uh, sorry, shareholders or bondholders, that company can be referred to as mutual fund. Take note. But now, because they can be referred to as mutual fund, it means that they have a portfolio they manage on behalf of the shareholders or bondholders. But we are saying that the shareholders or bondholders can extend their portfolio by not just dealing with one company, by not just dealing with one management. They can have their shares with Tesla. They can have their shares with corn oil. They can have their shares with UPD series. They can have their shares with Sky Shelter Fund. They can have their shares with Asha Mansad Insurance. They can have their shares in myriads of, with myriads of institutional investors. That is diversification by managerial arrangement because the management risk in each of these companies are never the same. So you are trying not to put all your eggs in one bag. You are also trying not to create a lopsided portfolio, but to have a balanced portfolio. A portfolio that behaves differently to the same or give a given economic situation or condition. And the portfolio managers who can also be perceived as the investment analysts are the ones that we also refer to as a federal watcher. They should be able to understand how different investments react to economic condition. For them to be in that position, which we believe they are, the professionals they claim to be, to advise that, look, these are the appropriate investments for you to select in order to achieve the goal of the client. I hope that is clear. And 
At this point, we just have to call it a day. Thank you. Go Thank on. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Sir. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, yes. Excuse yes, me, sir. Yes, yes. That, this is a governor speaking, a class rep speaking. Okay, okay. Sir, okay. I was unable to join you where you started. The network was giving problems. So how much is the textbook, sir? Yeah, you can pick it at 3,000. 3,000. Yes. Okay, sir. Yes. Okay, I'll call you there after then. I'll know how many people wants to buy. Yes, so but, uh, yes, but, uh, yes, but uh, you can help you can help by reading by reading of time because my question not with you. And my question is not with you. Go, go, go and look at past and look at past That is okay, one. Sir. That is one. Two, I will forward the will forward the with you, which you can send to WhatsApp platform for everybody to watch on um uh what's it called? Uh, systematic risk. And non systematic risk because we shouldn't be treating only returns alone in, in performance analysis, but the risk. So, after watching the video, then I will also make my explanation on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, sir. All right, yeah. all right, thank you. you're welcome, sir. Yeah. So, we may release you now, class. Thank okay. you, everyone. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Bye bye, bye, -bye sir. Well, Dr. Omer is out. Do we have anything to discuss just after this class? Tomorrow's lecture. 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 So, sorry, Sunday. So, sorry, Sunday. 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 <laughs> what do you want us to do? I think for me, you should, you should, you should come back to the class and say, see what this guy is saying. Then we, 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 we go ahead and we tell you what to tell him. What you guys do is just come up and say, I understand you, but we actually asked him for um a postponement of the class, you know? And he was actually telling me that he doesn't have time, you understand? So when he had mentioned um, Sunday evening, I said, okay, at least many people will be back from church. At least you'll be able to rest yourself before we do that lecture for Sunday. But if you, for me, oh, this is online class. So I just believe that the lecturer is not there. So you can always log in, nobody will ask you, question that where are you or they will know that you are not there. Okay. I'm okay. not trying to teach you uh, corruption. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Don't forget we have an assignment, assignment to submit that day. 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 So what are you teaching us? Okay. 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 okay, please hold on. The assignment you have done it on your phone. How do you present it on your phone? The work you say you will share your screen. Share your screen. Share your screen. How many people? Uh, it's, not, it's, not it's not compulsory. Okay. It's for those that are able to do it. Able to it will just take okay. like two okay. or three people. Okay. Not a compulsory. Okay. Uh -huh. You know, you know what I will do. I will discuss with him tomorrow or this night that it should allow us that it's not everybody that will be able to meet up for that lecture but it's better for us to take the lecture record it and then we we have it it is marked as if the lecture has been taken so that we have a lot to do so this time we don't need to drag ourselves backward anymore okay i i i understand I, what um, the lois um what i want to also add is that probably maybe their own opinion Out. One is that probably if it's possible that the lecture for tomorrow does, uh, does doesn't count for the attendance because of the peculiarity of the Sunday that is being scheduled for. So I don't know if that uh, can be discussed with the uh, Olimi. And I'll discuss with him. That's what I'm saying. I'll discuss with him that it should be lenient that uh, the situation on ground, so many people are trying to 
so many people not trying to so many people have a lot of things to do some will be traveling back to their base you know so i will try and convince him and then i know he will understand i'm sure which got them on, on my side some some people have smashed the this thing, and so let's uh, you have to do it. Babe, 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 the program has started though. Which program? Now for house, okay. the top, okay. which program? Which program this starts now? I beg, yeah. So you guys, I'm going to call um call you tomorrow. I'm going to call her tomorrow in the morning. As early as possible, so we can have a very brief conversation. So I'll get it. Every some people, um, some people have given me some suggestions on the group. God willing, I'll speak to her, and then she'll be able to accept the time frame that we are going to put. So yeah, I'll make sure to call her. Please also, um, before Doctor, oh, I'm sorry, Professor Omiri starts hammering on us. Those doing um, seminar, please start doing the assignment. Um, MKO Balogun's, um, I say. M MKO, yes, his assignment also. Please let's start doing or um, attending to that also. But I'll speak to Kolusha and I'll give everybody a response. Thanks. Thanks for your call, son. Eh? All right, bro. Okay, Dalu, thank you very much. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing very well, though. <laughs> We will understand that. Okay, so, guess what, you guys? Okay, so I'm in, I'm in Ogun State for a wise wedding. I bet. So, where in Ogun State are you? Where in Ogun State? Jesus, I've been waiting for Jesus. Jesus, yes. Okay, so I'm in Ogun State. At the I'm moment. taking my wife. So, I came for a wedding. Where are you? Okay, where are you? Give me location immediately. I'm in Olatab Hotel. I'm in Olatab Hotel. Where is that? Yeah, I'm a lot of hotel actually. Um, in, um, in How are you going to? Please, can someone reshare the IV on the on our group uh, this day? Let's see, Biko. Yeah, 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 it's already there. Now. It's already there. Somebody, uh, AY. Okay, let me let me try and resend it. So, so, um, send it to you. Paragon Alpha now. Forget to my class. I know. Good evening. Alpha, that paro don't click. You don't click. Yo. Huh? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, follow me here on top of WhatsApp, Avex. All right, no wala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Oh, um, thank I got for... that stuff. Who? So just okay. get the rest. All right, all right. No wala now. We'll just come with the remaining. So, Mama, we'll do the Alpha, the P don't stop. So, Mona, just run the two. Uh, you and Paragon, eh? Thanks. Okay, you don't rock them already. You don't do it already. All right, no wala. All right, and I hope everybody is doing very well, sir. Um, if you can make it, it will be lovely. I don't want to be in this wedding alone, please. Thank you. You can be in that wedding alone, okay? No worry. <laughs> I'll land you. I've seen AY. AY is looking very fat, you guys. AY is looking fat. <laughs> AY is fat, you guys. Hey, God. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to look for your own, no? God go help us. We go find our own wife. They are selling in Sango Market. He's good to marry now. For you. Very soon, the wife will have a pot belly. Yes, so he's already. <laughs> Talking from already. experience, sir. <laughs> yes, from experience, we have pot belly very soon. You will see him now. When you see him, when you see the pot belly, you say you scream. Oh God! The wife is looking like broomstick. He's looking like one like power bank now. Mm hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, you guys. I'll, I'll get everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my. Oh my. Who has to pick the flower now? What do you say? Who has to pick the flower? Which flower? Flower? What I'm flower? Be wide now. Who wants to be a wide control? Uh huh. <laughs> so make a couple go throw the flower now. So make a couple catch flower. No, I know they.